So how to prevent breakouts when wearing makeup? That's what we're getting into right now. Hi everybody, my name is Sean. Welcome to my channel. We are getting right into this video. If you're new, please subscribe, click the notification bell so you're notified every time I put up a video. My background is microbiology and biochemistry. I bring science to beauty, but I also do luxury unboxings and makeup tutorials. So let's get right into this video. I'm going to give you 11 steps from skin prep to wearing your makeup to taking it off that you would need to be cognizant of so that you stay acne free. At least keeping acne as minimal as you possibly can, right? Because hormones do play into this as well. But for the sake of this video, if hormone was, hormones was not a factor, let's talk about things that you can do to make sure that you're staying acne free. All right, friends, so tip number one is definitely using the aseptic technique. We want to make sure that our surroundings are super duper disinfected. Whether you're using gloves with bleach or you're going to use your Miss Myers or whatever it is, even if it's ethanol, you want to wipe down your area. As microbiologists, when we're in the lab, all scientists wipe down their areas before they start conducting experiments. That way you're microbial free from being contaminated and that includes your products. So I want to show you all the alcohol that I use. 70% isopropyl alcohol. I have three bottles of these. I know it's pretty hard to find alcohol right now because of everything that's going on. But if you have alcohol, I definitely encourage you to put your alcohol in a spray bottle and definitely have this on hand before you're putting on your makeup products. All right, friends, so going on to tip number two, we definitely want to make sure that our face is cleaned right? You can use this, an AHA or a BHA, but make sure that it's pH balanced. AHAs and BHAs, they get rid of dirt and unclog pores, slough off the dead cells, or you can use a mild exfoliant. The one I use is from um, Philosophy. Philosophy is the micro delivery face wash. Um, another product that I use as a cleanser though is my Super Pomegranate Nutritious from Estee Lauder. I've talked about this a lot. I've been using this line for years and the reason why I use products within a line as much as possible is because of synergy. When you're curating products in a lab, you're curating products against each other based off absorption rates, fillers, synergy, that kind of thing to get optimal performance from the products. So I use this and the moisturizer. So that brings me to, we want to moisturize. Not only are we using pH balanced products, and the reason why I say pH balanced is because if the skin goes too far alkaline into the 14 realm, which it doesn't want to be because the pH for a woman wants to be at a 5.5 and for a man a 5.8. So when you start taking the skin by using alkaline or stripping products like soap, into the pH of 14, you're looking at eczema, psoriasis, and when you start putting on makeup, it's going to start looking very cakey and patchy because the makeup is going to start to adhere to those dry areas. So you wanna make sure that you're staying within a reasonable and great pH. If you go too far down the pH scale, you're looking at acne. All right, friends, so step number three is this. We wanna clean our brushes. We want to clean our brushes after every single use. I know that seems like a lot, but it necessitates keeping your acne at bay. When I'm putting on my makeup, the first thing I do when I'm done is I put those brushes into a bowl or a cup of sudsy water to make sure that I don't find myself having to use them again the next day and it forces me to have to clean them because now they're wet. So I would say if you're one that forgets, definitely keep a cup of sudsy water by you. Washing your brushes is going to prevent Staphylococcus aureus and all Pseudomonas, all of those strains of bacteria from multiplying in your makeup brushes. They love dark, moist areas, and a lot of the makeup that we wear is very liquid-based. So every 20 minutes, bacteria replicates by something called binary fission. So the key is to make sure that we have that brush clean and clear from any possible contamination of these microbes from infesting in our brushes and then contaminating not just our face, but also our compacts 
because that's leading me into tip number four. We want to sanitize our contacts after every use. There's been many makeup artists that are starting to do that more frequently because clients have complained about styes with the eye. Because they're dealing with products, clients after clients, there's not that turnover time to disinfect your, your tools or your spoolies or whatever it is that they're using. So if that's happening with them, and the likelihood with them is much higher, right? Because they have different people in and out of their chair. But for you personally, you want to make sure that you are too doing your due diligence to sanitize your compacts. So what you want to do is put in your spray bottle with 70% isopropyl alcohol. You want to spray your face powders, let them dry. If you're using your loose powders and you're pouring it into the top of your loose powder cover, you want to clean that out with 70% isopropyl alcohol. These are some of the tips that you can do and let it dry for a few seconds. Again, 70% isopropyl alcohol is what they use in hospitals, but we use, well, we use ethanol in the lab, but this is one that will lice the cell on contact. So here's another good one. Throwing your makeup brushes into your makeup bag with all of your other makeup. That is an absolute no. If you're going to do that and you feel like you need to do that, and I definitely say if you can avoid carrying makeup brushes with you out and putting on makeup, do that because this, what we're dealing with right now, can sit in the air for at least three hours. So we definitely don't want to subject uh, the possibility of contamination on our brushes. So the thing that you want to do is make sure that, uh, you know, you have your application set properly before you go out the door. But if you must carry your brushes in your makeup bag, then the little sleeves that the makeup brushes come in, keep those little plastic sleeves, spray them with isopropyl alcohol, slide your brush in there, and then put those in a Ziploc bag because the top of that is still open, right? The brush in the little sleeve. And because that's open and exposed, we don't want that also knocking about in our makeup bags. We definitely want to put that in a Ziploc bag, a clean Ziploc bag, and then put that inside your makeup bag. It's better to be safe than sorry. And now that we're talking about makeup bags, sanitizing your makeup bags. That is a definite key. How often are you cleaning your makeup bags, taking out your makeup and wiping down your makeup bottles, your compacts and everything and cleaning out your makeup bag? That is very important. Don't let your makeup bag sit for weeks and weeks on end and you haven't wiped it out with alcohol wipes or with some means of disinfectant before putting your makeup back into uh, that makeup case or makeup bag. My other tip would be when you're applying your makeup, I see a lot of people using their hands. And the key, the key is if you're going to use your hands, you need to use your hands when they are clean. You want to make sure that right before you're putting on your foundation, you're washing your hands. And that's just my quick tidbit right there. Okay friends, so this next tip is literally making sure that you're not using the wrong products. Especially if you have acne prone or sensitive skin, you wanna look for products that say non-comedogenic or oil free. My Estee Lauder Double Wear is a non-comedogenic product. My skincare from Estee Lauder are non-comedogenic products. I know a lot of you that I'm working with, you're saying I'm doing everything that I can and then I find the culprit is actually in the products that you're using. A lot of the times we're using products that we don't know the ingredients of, but it's right on the back of the box most times or the back of the bottle. If you see products with alcohol in it, you want to steer clear of those, especially if you're acne prone or if you have sensitive skin because alcohol exacerbates the skin and it leads to breakouts because it's a drying agent and products are used with alcohol or alcohol is put into products to help with the absorption to penetrate the skin much faster so that's why they're in there you also want to stay away from anything that says uh, it has fragrance or dyes and under that word fragrance can be masked so many chemicals 
that leads to breakouts. So if you know that you're sensitive or if you're acting prone, those are some of the key th things you wanna look for. Also, you wanna steer clear from makeup that has acrylics in it. Acrylics are put in makeup a lot of the times to keep the integrity of the makeup. I know that sounds crazy, but it is true. So definitely take a look at the makeup that you have in your collection to see what's really going on. <laughs> All right, friends, the next point is simply this. Let's not use expired makeup. I did a video earlier on in my YouTube career, which is very short. I just, just started YouTube not too long ago, but one of my first videos was really talking about expired makeup. And according to Women's Health, you know, we really need to get rid of our makeup with the shelf life that we see, especially on luxury products, you will see the shelf life um, on there. And I also did a video on the symbols that let you lets you know um, a pretty much about the shelf life or what those symbols mean that you see on the back of packages. For a mascara, three to six months, and then toss it. Your brushes, every three months, you're supposed to toss those out. I know that seems expensive and extreme, but that is what women's health is dictating. When it comes to lipsticks, you know, and your eyeshadows, at least 12 months, some of them say 18 months. So if your manufacturer has 18 months on there, then keep it for the 18 months. Your face powders, um, loose powders, that kind of thing, they have a shelf life of about a year and a half to two years. You know, other than that, you're gonna have to toss those things doesn't make sense contaminating yourself or having the risk of infection um, with keeping makeup that you spend top dollar on, especially when you're buying luxury makeup, right? The luxury world, we tend to spend quite a bit on makeup. The thing is, you've got to throw it out. I did an experiment uh, in a video, it's really early on, where I had a MAC lipstick that I knew was longer than the shelf life of the two years. All right, but I think it was about 18 months. And what I did was I showed it in the video, it was just normal, nothing was on it. But under the right conditions, when I put it underneath the bathroom sink and I let it sit for about two days, there was, lo and behold, mold growing on it. That lets me know that this was um, contaminated with some sort of fungi. Now the thing about it is, um, we have to realize that in these makeup products, there are, whether it's natural or generic, preservatives in there that degrade the moment we open up our products, right? And even if we don't, they're still gonna degrade because they're in there for a certain period of time. And that's the reason why there is a shelf life on the back of most products. Now, the FDA does not require cosmetic brands to really disclose as per, as expiration dates or ingredients on products so we're lucky nowadays that we're starting to see that more and more uh, on our labels and that kind of thing some products still have some ways to come but for those of us that have that knowledge we need to pay attention to that uh, if you are not um, seeing that expiration date on the back then write down the time you purchased it from the cosmetic store to when you started using it, that would help you to at least trace back around there about the shelf life of this lipstick product or this mascara or whatever it is that you're um, using so that you're not using contaminated makeup. Yes, I do know that makeup costs money and I do know that um, some of us want to consistently hold on to that makeup and maybe try it later on. But if it has passed the shelf life, it's better to be safe than sorry. All right, friends, I've got a couple more tips for you and then we're gonna wrap this up. When it comes to makeup or beauty blenders, we wanna make sure that we're keeping them for three months. Don't keep them any longer than that. But in the midst of using these beauty blenders, that is a breeding ground for bacteria. We want to wash those frequently. And if you have a bowl of water, put that in the bowl, put the sponge in there, put it in the microwave, zap it for 60 seconds, and then take it out and let it dry. Or you can dry zap, what I call, after you clean it. Um, just put it on a napkin in the microwave and just zap it for 60 seconds 
and you're good to go. Another uh, tip I wanted to bring into this video as well is the Mary Kay Clear Poof. When we're going into using makeup that is being pushed into the pores, we need a way to pull that out. So if you're not using an AHA or a BHA, um, which most people don't really need, right? You can go in with a clay mask, especially if you have oily skin, a charcoal mask is gonna be your best friend because this helps to control oil, but it also pulls out dirt and impurities and makeup that's sitting deep within the pores. Charcoal is an absorbent. It's going to, like I say, extract out everything in those pores that will cause the pores to clog and lead to breakout. So make sure uh, you got yourself a charcoal mask. Another thing is when we're using sunscreen, and most women are opting for a physical sunscreen, one that is not absorbing into the skin, like a chemical sunscreen would. So a physical sunscreen like this banana boat has your zinc oxide. Uh, one of the, the culprits in a chemical um, sunscreen that brings about breakouts or what they call photoallergic um, dermatitis is oxybenzone. And I talked about this in another um, video. Avobenzone, octosylate, those kind of things can definitely lead to breakouts. You hear people talking about the burning or they end up with these red itchy bumps. That happens from those uh, key ingredients. And when we are done doing our makeup, um, here's a great setting spray. A really great setting spray that I like to use is the Mario Badescu Lavender, Aloe, and Chamomile. This brings a great calming to the skin and also brings great hydration. Or you can go after uh, rose water. You don't have to use this. This has, is lightly fragranced. You can go after the Altea rose water, which I have in my refrigerator. And that um, is just the smell of the roses and that works beautifully as a setting spray. Rose water, as you know, is great for fighting against acne, bringing in hydration, and aloe is rich in vitamin A, C, and E, So, and it also is rich in antioxidants, fighting off those free radicals. And then the next spray that I have is the cucumber, aloe, and green tea is in here. Green tea, another powerful antioxidant. So these are some of the things that you can do before putting on your makeup, having your makeup on and when we're taking our makeup off, the, the one thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we are using the right products. Uh, Clinique has Take the Day Off, Lancome has their Bifacial, which I actually use that makeup remover and <clears throat> that gets the makeup off and then I'll go in and I will use a uh, foam cleanser, which is my Super Farm Granite Nutritious. And this last point, I know I kind of grouped everything together. We, we don't want to share our products. We don't want to share with family members and everything. Especially, I know there's a huge propensity, especially when you get luxury makeup. I know my cousins love seeing my little collection that I'm building, thanks to Carolyn. But, you know, um, they want to try it and I can't allow them to try it. And I know that seems mean, but we want to be very careful because in sharing makeup, that can increase infections as well as exacerbate breakouts. All right, friends, so hopefully the lighting doesn't go down on me. So here's the next tip. We're putting on too much foundation when we find ourselves breaking out. We want to conceal it. But the problem with that is you're not giving that acne time to breathe and heal um, because you're layering on thick, heavy foundation. So a rule of thumb. Wherever there's the thinnest amount of skin, use the lightest amount of foundation, meaning your forehead, around the eyes, the bridge of the nose. When you wanna get into a heavier application and still going with a light hand, right? Because you don't want your makeup to start caking. You could use a heavier uh, consistency around the jawline, the chin, the cheeks, the upper lip, that kind of thing. Um, but still keeping it minimal, especially if you're breaking out around those areas, go with a light hand because again, we want that acne to heal. And you all know that's my first with everything is skincare, creating a strong foundation so that you can build upon. And that comes with the makeup application. A great canvas, 
allows for a really seamless application of your makeup and with clean tools. So let's move right into the next point. All right, friends, so this next tip is simply this. If you think about a concealer for under the eye, the eye area tends to be a very dry area, and we use a concealer to bring about hydration and that coverage, but it's going to be more oil-based. So if you're putting that on top of a pimple on the chin or in the cheek or in the forehead, you're going to exacerbate the issue because it's more oil-based. So a good rule of thumb is, if you find that uh, your product is more creamy or more oil-based, you don't want to use that on your breakout. All right, friends, so that's my tidbit on that. Definitely subscribe, like, and give this a share. Please, I would love to have you a part of this community. But let me know some of the tips and tricks that you may have that would keep you um, from having breakouts when using makeup down in the comment section below if you felt like I didn't cover it. I'd love to hear from you. And whatever you'd like to see from me next, definitely leave it down below. I love you all so much, and I'll see you in my next one. Ciao for now.